Yeah, welcome to my talk. I said uh, Minecraft and reinforcement learning. Um, yesterday there was also talk about reinforcement learning with a useful use case. So the definition is what is useful. I play lots of Minecraft and I found it useful not to play Minecraft and use Minecraft to do something with Minecraft. So this is in case you're looking for some useful use case depending on reinforcement learning. I will talk a little bit about it, but uh, most of the time it's just Minecraft. So, um, yeah, by the way, who never played Minecraft? Yes, there are always some people cool. Then I can go for this example here. So you see this picture and you don't know what the blue block is doing here. And this red, um, orange stuff, it doesn't look good. I think no one will go into this because this is lava. So when you go into it, Minecraft will tell you, agent tried to swim, so, and then you die. Then we have some brown blocks here. But you don't know what, what really is the goal here, what you have to do, or what, what's, what's about it. And now expect an agent who doesn't see something and have to do something. And that's, I want to solve for reinforcement learning. And later on, uh, also with deep reinforcement learning. But first with um, reinforcement learning. And therefore I'm using Minecraft as a very special, important tool. Minecraft itself was developed by a Markus Notch person, Swedish guy. He founded Mojang um, and Minecraft is one of the best selling games. Uh, yeah, I think it's still the one of the best selling games. Nowadays there's more the freemium part and then you buy dances. So uh, yeah. And uh, Markus Notch came up with the idea um, or with the, with the thing, um, he don't want to do anything anymore with Minecraft and want to sell it. Wrote a tweet about it and Microsoft bought it for two and a half billion dollar. First thing he did was buy a house in Beverly Hills and rebuild it in Minecraft. So you can see some videos about it, how he's living now. That's Markus Notch, yeah. And he invented Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft itself is a sandbox construction game. So you don't play in the desert. It's more like there's no really rule about it. You don't have to go from A to B or find something there or that. It's more like, yeah, some creative thing and yeah, the building aspect is also part of, of Minecraft. And you have everything in three dimensional. So you explore the world, gather some resources like finding a tree, chopping down the tree and then crafting on this, building a new um, yeah, wooden box out of this. And then you build up a house or something like this. This saves you for uh, creepers, zombies and skeletons during the night because there's also some combat part about it. There's also a more childlike version, but that's boring. Yeah, and you, you, most of the time you run around and f at, at the end you, you find, uh, try to find diamonds and then with the diamonds you, you could dig better and all this stuff. So yeah, you can waste lots of time with this. Project Malmö is also part of this reinforcement learning stuff. So um, it's open source, it's GitHub. Uh, I realized this morning when I ran through the slides, um, so Minecraft is owned by Microsoft, GitHub is owned by Microsoft and Malmö was also um, done with the Microsoft Research Lab here in, in London. I'm not working for Microsoft, so I'm not selling something but I realized it's a lot of my, um, Microsoft part here. Uh, Project Malmö is based on Minecraft, yeah. And it's using Minecraft Forge as modding framework. So modding stands for modification. Um, Minecraft itself was delivered as a big um, Java jar file. The modding framework uh, takes, unpacks this um, jar file, uh, disassembles the code, do some patching on this, and this allows you to yeah, send commands, getting information, or also change the behavior, like open up a chest box, um, you couldn't, only the owner of this box can do it, and all this stuff is possible with the modding framework. Um, Malmo is doing this with a mission XML file, so you write an XML file where you define your world, 
Uh, you get a world state, so you know where the agent is, and also that's important, send commands like walking left, right, jumping, and so on. And therefore, they're using the modding framework. Um, you can write agents in Python. Yeah, it's about machine learning. Everything is Python machine learning. Um, the other thing is Lua. Therefore, they use the Torch framework. Uh, C++, um, the reason for C++ is the modding framework. Malmö itself is written in C++ and everything around on the other languages are wrapped. C Sharp, uh, we're talking about Microsoft. They use this. Uh, Java, yeah, it's in Java file. So Minecraft itself is written in Java. And uh, our current learning environment is also part of it. So you can also write an agent for this. OK, and, and when I found uh, Malmö, I was, was looking around, and then there's blah, 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 everything, and there's something with reinforcement learning. I thought, OK, now I can use my time maybe a little bit more useful than just playing around and building a nice house and digging somewhere all over the area. No idea? Should I play Minecraft? No. <laughs> then you will not see anything. So, yeah, I came up with, with reinforcement learning and I thought, okay, what, what is reinforcement learning? So one part, we have the supervised learning. This one area. So you have classified images, cats, dogs, and everything, and you do image recognition with the convolutional networks on this, and this is um, supervised learning. Other part is the unsupervised learning. So if some unstructured data and then you try to find some, some correlation into the data and if you have a new data point you do the prediction on a new value for the other data and so on. So this is unsupervised and the third part is reinforcement learning. So there are th three classifications of machine learning. And in reinforcement learning you start with an agent and an environment. So the agent itself, it could be, it could be the, the small uh, yeah, agent itself, or it is Malmö as, as an agent. You can also have um, yeah, something with which do some commands. And then on the other side, the environment, this is the world. In this guy is the, the, the Minecraft world, for example. And the agent do some actions, like moving forward, jumping, and so on. And next thing, you get an observation. So depending on, you move forward and fall into lava, you will die. You move forward, you will have a new position. You're standing in front of a wall, you have no new position, something like this. So this is the observation on this. And you also get a reward. So if you find something, if you are successful, you get, for example, 100 points. If you fail because you fall into lava and, and die, you get minus 100. And for every step, for example, minus one. So this is the reward you're getting out of, of the environment. And yeah, that's the main idea of, of reinforcement learning. So the agent do some action, get reward and observation, and try to learn on this. And then you store this data in, in one way. and. When it dies, for example, or it's successful, you restart the game and try to learn on, on the knowledge you already have to get further and to solve some, some problem. There's a um, yeah, quote from David Silver. Um, he's um, with DeepMind and also one of the guys behind uh, AlphaGo thing. And I like this quote with the trial and error. So, it's like, um, I, th I think no one knows really when, when you try to, to walk, but when you, when you have kids, you see them, they stand up, they fall down, they try again, and so on. I also came up with the bicycle thing. You sit on a bicycle, you drive, you fall down, you stand up, and, and you're happy. Um, except of my brother, he was sitting on the bicycle through, right down the hill. There was a fountain, he didn't hit the fountain, and he was able to ride the bicycle. I was four weeks ago uh, also tried to fly after by on the bicycle, so this gives me a negative reward on, on this part on, on 
yeah, on my body, but um, wearing a helmet was um, some positive reward on this. So, yeah, you have this trial and error. This is reinforcement learning. So you try something, you fail, you try it again. And there's also a book, and as you can see, it's from 1998, so it's 20 years old. So this, this idea with the reinforcement learning itself, it's nothing which was invented two or three years ago, and it's now, um, yeah, getting hyped. It's, it's getting hyped in, in one way. Um, one of the reasons is, is like um, Atari games, for example, with um, DeepMind started with, with this stuff. And, yeah, in this book, there's a cliff walking example. And based on this, there's also in the Project Malmö a tutorial for this. <coughs> And this is where I'm getting now, and you get a reward. So every move you take is one, minus one. When you find a blue field, you get a reward of 100. Hitting lava, you will get minus 100. And now I have a demo for this. So let's see where I am. This started. This was this one, yeah. So now it's, uh, it, it lo loads the world, building the terra on it, and it starts walking. What was this? Oh, that's the wrong example. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, spoil it a little bit. So let's start, yeah. This looks more similar for the first example. So in this case, it's totally stupid. You can see here, um, the agent starts walking and um, randomly choose uh, one of the four directions and um, accidentally got, got the right direction, but dies. So there's no learning on it. It's just walking, dying, walking, dying. I don't know if this ever will find a blue block. I never run this so long. So this is totally stupid. So this is step one. I'm now going to step two. And here I have, so in next step, it uses the reward itself, but it's still not learning something. So let's restart this. So now you can see here some red dots. So it's learning where the lava is, and it's getting further. But it's still random walking. So it, it walks and tries to figure out the boundaries of, of the lava field. But that's it. So this also takes some time, and there's no learning on this. And now go to step three. In this case, it's doing the cue learning. And let's run through it. So here it also starts to try to find the boundaries. But it also learns um, the way how to get there and, and um, stores a known value in a table. I go later on, on in, in step by step into this table. But let's see how it's walking through this area. One interesting part is also when you look here, for example, it falls here into lava, is that it has no knowledge about what's left, right, or something. So as a human being, you would say, okay, when I step here and fall into lava, and I know I go from this side, I also should fall into lava. But there's no knowledge about this. So therefore, it, it really figures out all the boundaries. And we are at step 19. Yeah, it takes some while. It's getting close to the blue block. So the blue block itself is defined with 100 as the reward. And now it founds it first time. Oh, it's faster now. Normally it fall, falls, yeah, it falls sometimes into a lava now. <coughs> 
And maybe you can see also the color here changes a little bit. It's getting more into red. Um, finding the blocks is getting into green. Yeah, where are we? Step, yeah, seven steps. I think 37. Now it's getting faster. Now it learns the way here. So here it's unknown area where it still walks around a little bit, but it now gets the way here. Yeah. And figures out some possibilities. Right. And now it found the way by itself without any, any knowledge about, yeah, move this or that or, or seeing the blue block. It's just on, on based on reward. So every time it gets the reward back, stores the value and finds the way. Okay. So how is this working? Um, this is the result of this. So it's called Q learning. I just take out the, the dots itself and, and mark now the way through this area. And therefore, we have some mathematics. So I don't know if yesterday was someone in mathematics stuff. Um, I don't hate mathematics. It's not like I like it, but I don't hate it. Every time I see this formula, it's just like in the first beginning, like, wow, there's an error, this is cool, and, and big brackets, and oh, there's also some Greek symbols inside of this, and then you realize, okay, come down and um, just look what, what is the meaning of this. So as a developer with some code, it's easier to read. I don't know if maybe someone else will say it's, it's, you, you don't understand this one, this is totally clear. But what we have, we have a new value, based on the old Q, a new Q, based on the old Q, we have some alpha value. For this example, I'm using 1.0. So this is the way it goes, uh, the step size. So 1.0 is fast. Then we have the reward itself. So RT plus one is the reward you will get for this move. Some gamma value. This is like um, how you use the previous value, the maximum out of this. And this is the max Q, and then we have the old value. Subtract this, multiply by alpha. So that's the code for it. And what I'm looking now is the first time it finds the blue bo box itself. So this is the state here, <coughs> the starting point, and moving to the left direction and finding the blue box. Here's the same formula again, and the old value is zero. It's, yeah, it's zero because we've never been there. Also, the maximum Q is zero. We're getting a reward of 99 because we get 100 for the blue, block, blue box, minus one for the step itself, makes 99. Then I just add in the alpha and um, gamma values. They can get rid of most of the values and at the end we have 99. So this means when I'm at this state and move to the uh, left direction, I will get a reward of 99. So this is the step when I found the blue one. And now it just runs around and gets to this point from this state up to this area. Same formula again. So the old value is minus one because we already been there and was minus one. The maximum Q of this area of the next field is 99. Reward for this is minus one because we're moving just up. Gamma is uh, 0 0.8, still not, not changed, getting to 79.2. Adding the other values, getting rid of them, and we have 70.82. 
So this, this is the new value for this state. And that's the way it learns to find the correct way. So here have the complete Q table for it. As you can see with the L, it's minus 101, so this will make the, the table a bit uh, complicated. I just put an L in. And this direction, so the first value is moving left, down, right, up. So in this case, moving to the left side will be 99. Moving up is 78, as we already saw. And for this, it, it just propagates the value back to the beginning. So I got 61 and so on. And at the end, we have this path through all the, the, this area. So that's the way the, the agent is learning it. As you can see, it's alpha 1.0 and gamma 0.8, as, as I always used here in this example. I just changed the values to alpha 0.5, so it moves slower forward, but the reward it, it's um, using the maximum Q value is higher. And as you can see, it's all, all going a little bit down and there's no variation. So in the previous picture, you had some variation with the path. Here it's a strict path, but with the uh, move 40, it's still not uh, finished. So it's, it takes at the end nearly 60 moves to finish the complete path because the alpha value was so slow. Yeah, and that's the way reinforcement learning starts getting a value and then propagates this back. And with this, I can find a path to this field. So at this point, we know what everything is meaning now. So lava is not good. Brown fields doesn't matter which one. Blue is the goal for it. But what happens when we have a complete different scenario? So the blue field is moved in. Instead of here lava, there lava. When I now run, just run the agent, it will fall into lava because it only learned the path for one direction. So in this case, I have to relearn it again for this path. And this is not useful. I mean, I, I don't know which scenario makes sense to, to say um, I know this path. Maybe if you go to, to the airport, I can learn I have to step out here, move to subway there, and then go to the airport for daily thing. But for something you really want to learn, like a robot which behaves autonomous or something, it's not useful. And therefore, deep reinforcement learning makes sense. So let's take a look at this. So we have our reinforcement learning part and our supervised learning part. And the part between, that's deep reinforcement learning. So it's part of supervised learning, like cats and dogs. We take some images, and based on these images, we do, um, yeah, finding our way to, through the path. So in this way, the agent can see. And there's a nice example of um, yeah, Atari games, for, also from DeepMind, and also paper about it on archive. And let's just run an example. So this, by the way, um, breakout, which Steve Jobs and Steven Wozniak uh, developed once also interesting to know that they started with breakout. So in this case, it takes also the images and the reward itself is just um, the points and the lives of this. Um, and there's also the uh, archive, archive learning environment. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, it finds the tunnel. Um, where you get some part in the memory which is counting up the lives and, and the points, and it's just for, for using the reward. So it learned to hit the ball behind the wall. OK. 
Okay, let's go one step back. So how this is working? As I said, they're taking the images for this. But you don't know the movement, really. So you don't know if this ball is flying up or down. You have to move here or there. It's not clear. So therefore, they take the previous image and the actual image and just subtract the image on it. And therefore, you get the movement of the ball. And then you know where you have to move your paddle on this. Reward is like, yeah, life and um, points. Sounds simple. Okay. <laughs> so what I've done was um, just taking, here's an example. This is the starting point, start, starting scene. Agent moves to the right side. And then I subtract the image of it. And this is just an image for, for the learning part. So you can see there's some, some kind of movement between this. And then I run lots of um, different scenarios and um, do the reinforcement learning on it to know, okay, this was a good move, this was a bad move, and also all the screenshots on this. Um, the Project Malmö supports this easily, so you, you just take the screenshots, save it on, on the file, and afterwards, I just do the subtraction of these images and got 12 classes. So moving east, north, uh, south, west, that's the commands for the agent. And then I have a bad move, guess what, falls into lava. Um, a good move, nothing really happens. And a super move when it was um, finding the blue block. A little bit the problem is um, that for the super part, you don't have so much data because it's only one block. And most of the time, um, when it's on, on the corner, you only find one way to the block. So the data for, for finding the blue block is a little bit smaller than um, the bad blocks. And the good blo moves are, yeah, you have too much of them. And then I took this images and the classification, and this is the Atari paper. And then I just created a Keras model for this. So we have an 84 by 84 image. Uh, the first hidden layer is 16, 8 by 8 with a stride of 4. And 32, 4, and 2. Then one final hidden layer with a 256. And the number of actions, in this case, um, it's 12. For the Atari games, it depends on um, if you can move left, right, up, down, or something like this. But I have this, this is the number of classes, 12. <coughs> and here I have the Keras model for this. And as you can see, a 16 8 by 8 with a stride 4 by 4. Using your as activation, then 32 4 by 4 with 2. Flatten this to 256. And here are my 12 um, classes. So that's Keras code. In case someone is interested into this, yeah, an optimizer, I'm using Adam. And based on this, I got the training data classific classified and just run through all this. Right. Take a look here. Okay, this was this one, and yeah, it's fine. Is it fine? Okay. Yeah. Is it good? Is, yeah, it's a good one. Uh, it dies, yeah. I, I talked to it. So, in this case, it starts, takes the image, takes the previous image, and depending on this, it uh, figures out the move. It do the, it, yeah, it takes, do the prediction on this, and based on this prediction, it will move in a, yeah, direction. So I have here the, wait, here's the, Example of this, I just do have something useful at the moment. I lock too many data, I think. Um, let's 
take a look. Oh yeah, can make it bigger. So this is just some, some, somewhere between. So I get the information left is bad, left is super, which makes no sense. Up is good, and what happened then? It moved, take the action, move south. And south is up. It's, it's upside down. I don't know why it's upside down. So moving up is moving south. It was based in, in, in London, I don't know. <laughs> I, I expect this in, in Australia or South Africa or something like this, but yeah. So it moved up and it survived in one way. Next one is left bad, still left bad, and move up. So it moved again south, right bad, move up good. And that's the way it, it finds the way through it. But as you can see at the end, uh, it still dies. And the problem for this is when you, maybe I should slow down a little bit this scenario. Yeah, I have to wait for it. I thought I, uh, come on, this was the correct wait. Just make it a little bit slower. Yeah. The problem, as you can see, it now hides the blue block. And I only have two steps for this. So in this scenario, it has totally no idea where to move and, and then um, for some reason it moves into the lava. So this is, this is the problem here with this. The other problem is I really don't know if, if it's using the, the correct data or something. What, what, what's the input for this data? So that's the reason I want to play around with Lime. There was also a session this morning. Um, as you saw in, in the beginning, there are some um, different colors here, and maybe um, what, what's the influence of, of this image? Is it maybe the, the gray background, for example, to move left or right? So most of the time it works, it finds the correct way, but in this situation not. Uh, yeah, one, one reason is it hides the blue block. So this could be also some, some scenario to get more data or use maybe LSTM to, to build up something. But um, yeah, I found a solution which works. So it was not not so totally useless at this point. So this is a different scenario. But again, I don't know if it's accidentally, so it moves and goes in th through this, doesn't fall into the lava in this, and then finds the blue block on it. It's also a question, um, does it already learn that the blue block is something good, or is it just, as I said, um, some gray background, all left or right um, colors? So that's the reason I want to try a lime on, the, on this. And yeah. But it just uses the images itself. So there's no knowledge about um, pre trained data on this or something like this. Just previous image, actual image, subtraction on this, and doing the prediction on it. Okay. This was the deep reinforcement learning. Yeah, takeaway. Um, Project Malmö itself, it's, you have, it gives you a scenario where you can set up some, some um, machine learning uh, scenarios, like for reinforcement learning, also other stuff. Um, you described this just in an XML file. I can show the XML file. So this, this one. So you have here some, you set up the world, it's a flat world, and then this one is air, lava, and sandstone. 
this is the lapis block where it's finding a goal. You have some limits and everything. So this is relatively easy um, described. I don't know why they're using XML. This is also something. Nowadays you use JSON or YAML. Okay, they use um, XML for this. Yeah, right. So um, it's free. It's also you don't need a, a Minecraft version for this. You don't have to pay for, for Minecraft itself. It comes with Minecraft. It uses Minecraft. Minecraft you only have to pay when you run a game on server side or something like this. Then um, reinforcement learning. Yeah, I was really happy to see your talk yesterday to, to see something useful with reinforcement learning, to getting the rain from the roof based on reinforcement learning at the end. Um, I'm working for a company with e-commerce. We uh, announced last week a product which also uses reinforcement learning for the cold start of, of products. So you have a new customer, you have no historic data of the customer, you, don't, you even don't know his name or, or his, his gender or age or where he's from. So the problem is how do you show him some products? You start with A, B, C or something like this, or in this case there's something like the margin on the broad product or um, yeah, a best-selling pro product. Something like this will be used for the reinforced for the start of this. And then depending on how the user behaves in the first scenarios, like um, clicking on something or scrolling through it, you set up the, the next product for this. So this is also something where reinforcement learning is used useful. But most of the time, um, yeah, it's more for gaming, for the Atari games, for the Go, Alpha Go part where also the deep reinforcement learning is part. So this is, this is an interesting field where you can play around with. Um, but um, on the other side with, with your roof problem, deep reinforcement learning wouldn't help. So it's more in reinforcement. Deep reinforcement learning is more when, when you have some images or something. So yeah, that's the part of this. I um, yeah set up the have the link uh, the slides are put on on um, slide uh, no slide deck slide deck yeah I will uh, tweet about it there are some links how you, where you can find the project Malmo um, it's on GitHub uh, it runs oh yeah by the way it runs on Windows Linux and and on Mac so it's available on I think nearly everything. Um, the book itself, there's this is version one, 20 years old. There's a, they, they are working on a second version. This is online available. <coughs> and on YouTube, there are reinforcement learning courses from David Silver, so the guy from DeepMind. It's interesting stuff. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.